Hi friends, this is Annie Grace and I am answering readers' questions and today I have a question from Liz. She says, my question Annie is about social drinking. When I'm out with friends for a drinking session, how do I muster the willpower not to drink? I think there's some important things here. You know, you can go through so much mindset change about alcohol, reading books, watching videos, engaging with other people who have stopped drinking, you know, really getting kind of an alternate perspective, which is beautiful but nothing is more powerful than your own experiences. And so somehow you need to get a few of your own experiences under your belt. And I remember very early in um, my days of not drinking, this was one of the things that was somewhat terrifying because you didn't know what to expect. How am I going to sit there with all my friends and, you know, order the iced tea or order the tonic and lime? And what's that going to feel like? But what I did is I did a few things. Before I would go, I would just take a few minutes to just imagine how it would go, both the good and the bad, and kind of bring it all up. Like, okay, what if they all make fun of me? What if they all pressure me? What if they all um, are supportive? What if I have a great time? What if I'm sitting there laughing? What if it doesn't feel any different? And just kind of run through every scenario I could think of, just so that I was somewhat prepared for when it happened. And then the second thing I would do is I would make myself a firm commitment and not necessarily a forever commitment, but a tonight commitment. Tonight, doing this, going out with my friends, I am not going to drink. And I would look at it as a bit of an experiment. I would say, no matter what, no matter how badly this night goes or how brilliantly this night goes, I am committed to not drinking because I want to see how it goes. I want this experience. And if this experience is miserable and horrible and teaches me that man, life really isn't that great without alcohol, so be it. I'm open to that. But if this experience is amazing, I'm open to that too. But I know I won't have the experience unless I go out and actually do it. And there's so much freedom in that decision, that night decision of like, okay, tonight, I'm not going to be on the fence about this. Tonight, I'm not going to drink no matter what. I've made that decision for myself. There's nothing anybody can do. I've run through the scenarios in my mind. I've made this choice. And then when you go out, it does become somewhat of an experiment. You're sitting there and you're saying, okay, I want to separate fact from fiction. What are my fears and anxieties about not drinking and what really happens? Because our own experience more than anything else cements in our mind the mindset shift that happens around alcohol. And it cements in our mind. It's so much more powerful than any book you could read, any video you could watch, your own experience. And so when you're out, then you want to just become really aware of your feelings during the night. Like, what exactly do you feel you're missing out on if you feel you're missing out? Or, you know, are you actually having more fun than you expected? Or, you know, is one of your friends, are you looking at them and being like, wow, I'm I'm glad I'm not slurring my speech. You know, that's nice. I never have noticed before how much that person drank. You know, what's going on? And kind of have this dialogue in your mind because your mind will be fully present and capable to kind of be present with the conversation and be really analyzing what's happening and just look at it as a little personal experiment. What is happening? What specifically are you craving? If you're really craving something, is it the taste? Is it the camaraderie? And just become really aware. And awareness is just so, so important because there's so much anxiety around those firsts, but there's so much freedom in that decision. And then being able to go home the next day and say, okay, What was that really like? Like, how bad was it? How good was it? What happened? The brilliant thing for me is that every time I did this, I would go into it with so much fear. I would go into it really wondering, like, what is this going to be like? How are people going to react? And then I'd come out the other side, and every single time, it would exceed my expectations. I'd be like, wow, that was really not bad. I mean, I remember watching other people order a drink, And watching them drink their first drink and their second drink and seeing no change in their demeanor and realizing like, wow, is it even, do they even feel it? And then thinking back on my drinking days and realizing, no, I wouldn't have felt my first few glasses of wine because my tolerance was so high. So, you know, what, what was I really missing out on? Probably I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything, but it took those personal experiences And you don't get those personal experiences unless you commit to, okay, tonight I'm not going to drink. I'm not, I'm going to look at it as an experiment. And the second thing I'll say around this issue, I mean, I could talk probably for 45 minutes around this issue, but I'm going to try to keep it short. But the second thing I'll say is that you have to realize that your views on alcohol and your thoughts about it 
over time are going to dictate how you feel about it. So what I mean is this, you know, we as human beings, we actually think about 80 or 90% of the same thoughts we thought yesterday. So, you know, we've been habitually thinking we need a drink. Alcohol is great. Alcohol is key to these social sessions. Alcohol is so important, yada, yada, yada. And all this just happens. It's just habitual thinking that we're not in control of. It's just happening. And we have to change that habitual thinking. And in order to do that, we need to become aware of what it is that's going on, what this cycle is happening, and then be able to kind of say, okay, is that true? Is that not true? And then consciously replace it with new thoughts. And the kicker about that is those new thoughts like, all right, I need a drink to relax. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do I really? Well, actually, studies show that you're much less relaxed when you're constantly putting alcohol in your body than, and much less able to deal with stressors than when you're not. And so you say, that's not actually true. Then you might not feel yet that that's not true. The feelings haven't caught up, but you have to consciously think, that's not actually true. I don't need a drink to relax. And it might feel fake at first. It might feel like you're just telling yourself something just to tell yourself something, but that's how your brain works. You need to consciously be thinking these thoughts. And then when you're consciously thinking thoughts enough, then they become part of this 80, 90% of the cycle of thinking. And, and, and then all of a sudden, your thoughts about alcohol change and your feelings around alcohol change. So it's really important to have action and awareness and conscious thinking and I apologize about the dogs, before um, emotion. And so these things that you do of being really aware, of being really proactive, and being really conscious about your thinking happen. And then all of a sudden, one day, the emotions follow. You're like, ah, oh, and you feel like you don't need alcohol, and you feel like you're not missing out. But those emotions only follow when you are able to consciously be changing your thinking. So Liz, I hope that answers your question. And again, this is Annie Grace. Thank you so much. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.